about us as Christians, we tend to say it's all in God's word. Like just go ahead and read God's word. It's in the book. Like just read it. But a lot of people have trouble connecting, you know, that example to like everyday life. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, it's Princess Renny here and I hope you guys are doing well. Here on this channel we talk about natural hair, we talk about lifestyle as well as faith. Today we'll be jumping right into Christian Chronicles, the new series that we started which is called I'm Christian but dot dot dot. So, um, last time I spoke about I'm Christian but I don't like people and um, a lot of you guys um, had a lot to say, <laughs> which is good. It's good that we're opening up the dialogue and you guys are um, really like thinking about what God's word says about love and liking people and all that stuff. Um, and I realized that that video was just like the tip of the iceberg. I wasn't really going in depth in like what God has really called us to do when it comes to loving and showing that we love people. I've been, I, this is transparency hour, moment, whatever you want to call it, um, but I have been getting a lot of information and I'm like trying to figure out how I can bring it to you guys in a way that of course gets to the point but it's like clear as possible and without rambling so the past two weeks because i recorded the series like two weeks ago um the past two weeks i've just been getting a lot of impartation about like doing part two of i don't like people but this time it's going to be more about like i don't know how to love and i realized that the thing about us as christians we tend to say it's all in God's word. Like, just go ahead and read God's word. It's in the book. Like, just read it. And of course, it is. Like, God tells us and He commands us and He shows us by example that we should love and how we should love. But a lot of people have trouble connecting, you know, that example to like everyday life. And that was one thing for me as a Christian that I struggled with as well. Like, yes, I know God's word says this and, you know, I try, but then, like, we come up with all these different excuses. And I want us to be able to put those excuses out there, put them all out here, whatever they might be, and address every single one of them. Because we tend to come up with an excuse for every single thing. I know God's word says this, but... I know this, this, and that, but I'm Christian, but. <laughs> so um, I definitely wanted to get into that uh, topic about like not knowing how to love and how to show love um, because that's a very real topic. I feel like a lot of us talk about love or we say the word and we don't necessarily show it and I want us to get into that topic. So if you guys are excited and you are ready and even if you're like, you know, cleaning or cooking or whatever it is that you're doing while you're listening to this video or watching this video, um, just make sure that you are ready because I don't know how long it's going to be. There's a lot of information that, again, has been imparted into me and definitely want us to be able to get right into that. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, this channel just keeps growing and of course it's bigger than me. I don't know why you guys subscribe, but whatever the reason is, uh, thank you, and I hope that God will continue to use me to impart something into someone, at least one person. That's it, just at least one. Of course, I hope there's more, but yeah, let's get right into it. So, in our previous video, we talked about um, I'm Christian, but I don't like people, and I addressed some of the excuses that we come up with as to why we don't like someone, they're annoying, they're not lovable, whatever the case may be. Um, or like they might have heard us or whatever the case is and we tend to use that as the reason why we shouldn't show love and I did talk about um, the fact that Christ has shown us the perfect love in that you know God sent his only son his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins for the things that we did and while Christ was on the cross one of the things that he said was forgive them Lord for they know not what they do and a lot of the people that were saying crucify him crucify him in that they knew exactly what they were doing they were crucifying jesus but jesus understood that it was a lot more 
deeper than just crucifying you. Like you're not just harming me, um, but you're also denying me. You're also saying that I am not worthy to be your savior or your king. The devil is a liar, okay? Um, so my memory card was filled. And I realize there's a lot of videos that I chose not to delete from the card for whatever reason. Anyways, we're getting right back into it. You know, we denied him and he still chose to love us, right? And a lot of the times when we think about uh, like Christianity and, you know, that unconditional love that God has shown us, right? There's um, three different kinds of love. There's the Eros love, which is the romantic love. There's the agape love, which is the unconditional God love. And then there's Philos love, which is the friendship kind of love, right? Um, but even so, even though we categorize love into um, these three different categories, right? God wants us to go a little bit deeper than that. Like, okay, you're in this category, so I'm going to love you to this extent. Or like, you're in this category, so I'm going to love you to this extent. No. God wants us to show that unconditional and God being love to every single person person that we meet, whether they're a stranger, whether they're friends, whether they're your parents, whether they're your boss, whoever they are. God commanded us in the different relationship levels that we have to show love and respect to these people. So it doesn't matter what category or relationship they're fulfilling in your life. Um, it is still important for us to show that love. And a lot of things as Christians, we, um, or People in general, not just Christians, but like people in general, we have this trouble with like showing that love, that unconditional love because of X, Y, and Z. You can insert your excuses as we were talking about before. Um, when we think about uh, like, you know, our friends, we're like, oh yes, I love you. We like the same things. You're my best friend, whatever the case is. But don't cross me because like I'm gonna say you're fake and then we're not friends anymore and that's it we're done or like um, my boss I don't like what they said to me today I'm just not gonna talk to them for the rest of the day like I'm gonna avoid them at all costs get my job done get out of here I'm done with this um, our parents I don't like <laughs> that they keep telling me what to do I can't go anywhere I can't do this whatever the case may be and we're just like forget about this heavy eye roll attitude whatever but God commands us number one to respect authority right so whether it's your parents your boss you know um your president yeah that one for real like we should still respect authority and um that definitely convicted me because there's some times where we have people set in these like higher positions than us and we're looking at them like but you're not even qualified for this. And we say that, like we speak that over other people's lives and then we tend to forget that Christ, God, puts us in different situations and different positions that we're not even qualified for. Like he doesn't call those that are qualified, he equips the called. So like you can't speak a curse upon someone's life saying, oh, you're not qualified, you shouldn't be in that position because God appoints, right? He's the one that allows people to function in different areas for a purpose. You know, the enemy might try to, um, you know, intervene in certain things, but God is the one that allows it at the end of the day. And we might not understand why that person's above us or why that person's our leader or why that person's there speaking into our lives or wherever the case may be, but we still have to respect that authority. The same goes for our parents, right? He told us to obey our parents and honor them, right? So that our days on this earth can be long. Um, and a lot of youth may have trouble with like building those relationships with their parents and genuinely loving them, even though, you know, their parents are like, whatever it is. And I definitely want us to have a conversation about building godly relationships with our parents and with our peers and with whoever it is that we meet. Um, but God shows us and commands us to love them in spite of, right? That in spite of love, that agape, unconditional love. And I definitely hope from last week's video, you guys went into the scripture and you read the story about the Good Samaritan where, um, you know, the priests and the rabbi and those and the Jews and all those people that you would expect to show God's unconditional love chose to turn and walk away, right? But it's the Samaritan that decided, you know what, I'm not only going to stop, 
I'm gonna check in with you. I am gonna help you up. I'm gonna take you to somewhere to safety. I'm gonna make sure that you have everything that you need before I can leave you. And you know, a lot of us as Christians, we have this label and we're like, I'm gonna help you to this certain extent. And that's it. Um, and it's like we have to act out that love no matter what like it's that in spite of love that continues to pour out and I remember there was a season in my life that I like realized like I didn't have that unconditional love I had like um broken off a lot of like people in my circle because of you know what they might have said or what they might have done or you know um i am stepping out into this season in my life and you're no longer <laughs> you know and this is me being transparent you're no longer like on that same path as me so like we tend to think like oh because i'm christian and i'm like devoting myself to this life i can no longer function which is true sometimes there's some friendships you need to break off but it was in a way that i was being stush like you know I'm here with Jesus rocking with him and if you're not rocking with him then you can't rock with me and just you stay over there and I legit like it wasn't even like I was telling them hey I'm on this like path in my life I know I've been Christian all my life but I haven't been living right and this is what I'm doing instead like I just cut it off and um you know it was like they would invite me out and I'm like I'm not about that life anymore and just like not respond like that kind of thing and I realized that like the way that I handled it wasn't the right way like God would have received so, so much more glory um, if I had reached out to those people to say like exactly what I said like this is what I'm doing um, I'm devoting my life to Christ and I know you know you know the old me, you know how I was before, but this is something that I really want to be serious about and I want to be um, intentional about, and I chose not to. So one of the songs that really laid on my heart, it's actually two songs by KCJ, but one of them was, I believe it's called Your Heart, where she says, I'll be your heart to the ones I meet. I'll sh okay, I'll sing it, I'll sing it. I'll be your heart. To the ones I meet, I'll show you love to the least of these. I would have never known if you didn't first love me. I've learned to love when I'm your hands and feet. So there's verses to these, this song that I'm not going to get into right now. But that song convicted me so much and like was my prayer for this season in my life. Um, after I realized the way that I handled things were not the way that God would have preferred me to handle them. So I remember when I was working at um, like this museum and I would just like during the hours that it wasn't that busy, no one was around, I would constantly like repeat that part of the song. Basically, I wanted to be set apart and I wanted to have a heart like God's, right? That. I can be able to look past the hurt, look past what people do to me and still choose to love them. And I <laughs> I think I understood what I wanted in that moment because I knew what it's like to be on the other side of that, to not love unconditionally, to um, you know, treat people based on how they treated me, right? And I knew that's not what God called me to do. He didn't call me to treat people the way they treated me. And I wanted to have a heart like him so it'll be easier, not that it'll be easy, but it'll be easier to love the way that God has called us to love. Um, David was a man after God's own heart in the sense that whenever he messed up, he always went back to God. And I wanted to have that, that my heart is aligned with God's heart so that I know when he's hurting, I'm hurting too. In the sense like, I see someone that's in pain, I see someone that's struggling and I can't just turn and walk away. Like, I can't just be okay with seeing someone in need. Um, that's not what he called me to do. That's not how he called me to live life on this earth. And um, just wanted to have his heart 
with everyone that I meet, uh, whatever way that I can help, if it's just a prayer. Like, because honestly, sometimes in certain situations, all we can offer is a prayer, continuous prayer. Um, but then there's certain times where I can offer financial um, help, whether I can offer like physical help, like, you know, helping someone cross the street or I'm not that strong, but like maybe helping them carry something. Um, in whatever area or whatever um, way I can function in someone's life to be God's heart, I wanted to have discernment of what that is and the, um, the obedience to carry out what God wants me to do in that season or in that moment to help that person. And we tend to forget that a lot of the times people don't know Jesus until they encounter us, right? So they don't know real true love is. And when we talk about Will Smith and Jada and their entanglement and all that stuff, they have their own perception of what love is supposed to look like. And I don't want to get into their relationship because that's a whole nother topic. But the idea is that everyone has their understanding of what love is. Thank you.